Hey everybody, it's Allie Edwards and I am back today with another foundation page idea. This one is going to be focusing on using some of the tree stamp or the tree stamp set that we offered this year. And I am going to pair the tree die cut from the die cut set with this, what I love about our tree this year, card. This is a four by six card from the main kit. And I'm kind of thinking generally what my idea is, is I want to have a big photo of our tree <clears throat> excuse me, or of the living room or, you know, something like that. So I've got a, this is the more twinkle lights pattern paper. And as of right now, I'm just going to set this in here because I think that this is what I'm going to want to do for this one. But I know that I can play around with this. So this is what I'm going to start with. The, and the idea that I have that I want to play around with is creating a few different trees that could be adhered to the top of this card. So the card will get adhered in there probably with a sticker attacher. So one of these guys like this, maybe the gold one, there's a white one too. I'll probably use the white one. Adhere the sticker or adhere the card into the album with the sticker attacher. You can see what this looks like and I'll show you more as we go along here. And then have like just a, a few, I don't know how many I'm going to fit, you know, three or four trees. It's almost like making a little forest above the four by six card. So in the past we did a uh, one of our product play themes one year was trees. And so I've done one that had like a big, four, you know, a big bunch of different trees in different sizes. But I like the idea of just doing, maybe I'll do three of the big ones and then three of the smaller ones kind of layering in them, layering them in there so they all sit on the top of this card. Then I'll think a little bit about what I want to do on the back of this. I may leave that uh, until later. I might stamp on it. I haven't decided yet. This is kind of me at the the beginning phase of at least setting something up to document what I love about the tree this year. And if you read or saw, watched my reason why this year, one of my intentions is to have, you know, a colorful, really like kind of focus on a colorful Christmas. And so I'm going to be at putting colorful lights on the tree here for the first time in, I can't remember the last time I had colorful lights. I've been like a hardcore white light person, but I would like to do a colorful series of trees. I think that I will probably make at least one of the trees into a shaker so I can bring in some more of the fun, uh, color, sequins or the sequin mix that I've been using there. I, you know, I've got a variety of them. I actually, in this one, might use the one that has the greens and those. These, again, are from uh, the Diary of Belle Rose. I know that she is having a restock on some of her holiday sequins on November 4th, which is my birthday. So that's even more fun. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my initial starting place. I am going to I'm going to begin by simply stamping out some different trees. Maybe I'll emboss on some of them. Maybe I'll use a stencil. I haven't, I haven't decided. We're just going to play. We're going to play and make some trees and see how I can um, adhere them onto the top to create a fun foundation focused on trees to document the story of what I love most about our tree this year. All right, I'm super excited to share how this one came together because I love I love a good evolution, right? I love a good evolution from an initial idea to what the finished product actually turns out looking like, which I don't always know what that is going to be. So what I started out doing was stamping some trees. I initially just did the one color in the Mackenzie, but then I had I had seen on Pinterest a some images of multicolored or dual colored ornaments that I thought were really fun just you know two solid colors and so I kind of wondered you know what what would happen if I did that with the trees and so that was the inspiration for this knowing that this would be a way that I could bring in some color into the trees which is what I was wanting to do so I played around with a few different colored inks I've got rose garden which is our pink our dark green is Mackenzie the um, light green is Willamette the yellow is called honeymoon and the red is called Redwoods. So playing around with each one of those, um, I did, I don't know how many, I think I did five of them. I ended up just using three, but I wasn't sure in the beginning how many I was actually going to use. So I did um, multiples so that I would have a couple of different choices. So after I stamped those all out, which I just was so excited even just stamping those out. I loved, uh, I love how that two-tone color looks on there. Then I cut each one of them out individually using um, scissors 
And so I used both my large scissors and my smaller scissors, and I kept repeating the mantra to myself. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Because it's a little challenging to cut these trees out. And so I tried to make it easy on myself by just doing like two little snips, a snip in, like a short snip, and then a long snip. Uh, and that ended up turning out pretty good. You know, try not, not feeling like I had to make rounded edges. Like these trees actually have a little bit of a rounded edge on each one of those branches coming out. Um, but doing just two little snips, a snip in and then a snip up essentially. Uh, that ended up working pretty good. And I continued to just say it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. We don't need it to be perfect. We just, we're, we're here for fun. We're here to document some stories and, and to enjoy the process. So while I, after I stamped those, I actually looked back at what I had done before our release this year. And I had actually done a little forest there of some of those trees, uh, just as an example during the release period or when the collection was going live. And so I liked it looking back at those and kind of thinking, okay, I like how I laid those out. I liked the three uh, larger ones with the two smaller ones. So I did the three larger trees and then I did two of the smaller trees that I decided to emboss. The first one is the Noel tree. I'm gonna use gold emboss embossing powder for that. And I also decided to switch up the background paper. So instead of doing it on white cardstock, I'm doing it on vellum. A little bit of a different texture, a little just just has a different look to it. Bring a nice little bit of variety and contrast into my little mini forest that I'm building here. So I've got the Noel. I'm going to heat set that then. I love watching it melt. Always so fun. Um, and then I'm going to cut out or to stamp another one of those smaller trees. I picked the lined uh, smaller tree and I'm going to use red embossing powder for that. Cut each one of these out. Right now you can just see I just I didn't do a a tight cut on that one yet. I kind of wanted to just wait and see what the second tree was going to look like. And I kind of had an idea that the second tree may have a better definition on the outside edges to, and that I could layer that on top uh, in order to cut out the Noel tree too, because of the way that the text lays on the Noel tree, the branches aren't as defined. Um, so you can see using gold or red embossing powder on this one, these are both from Ranger. We offered these as part of the collection this year. There's a couple of the gold embossing powder left, and then I have a link for the red on Amazon if you wanna grab the red one, because we did sell out of the red version. So what I did there is I'm just layering them on top of each other because it gave me a better template for cutting out that Noel tree. It just had, didn't have as much definition. So in this case, I did like kind of a rounder, um, a rounder cut, and then I'm gonna go back in and do the little individual branches. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be <laughs> perfect. Imperfect is beautiful. Imperfect is fun. Um, you know, you can also learn from the mistakes that I make and the lessons that I learn, which is part of the reason why I film my videos the way that I do, rather than saying, step one, this is what you do. Step two, this is what you do next. Um, I like for you to see kind of the evolution of the process. I'd like you to see when I make a mistake, what do I do uh, with that mistake? You know, how do I either cover it up? Do I do it again? Do I, you know, how do I make it work if I feel like making it work? So that's part of the reason why I like to share those kinds of things in these videos. So going in there, I'm doing, again, that same technique of like one cut in and what, you know, one short cut and one long cut just to get those to a little bit more of that, um, tree shape, the, the same tree shape there. Then I'm gonna layer those five trees on top of each other, and that's kind of what I decided to do first. I decided to have the middle tree be the two-tone green, and I'm gonna use just a little bit of rolling adhesive along the outside edges to temporarily hold it in place. My idea here is that my journal card is going to actually sit on top of the trees, and I'll use a little bit of red line tape to adhere it. But in the meantime, 
I'm still wanting to get these all set in the same spot. I actually think this turned out super, super cute. It's something that you can do even if you don't want to attach it to the top of a journal card. You could make a little forest, a little mini forest like this, and you could put it on a piece of pattern paper or a piece of transparency. There's lots of different things that you could do if you created a little forest like this. And of course, you could do more embossing and all those sorts of things. So here's a spot where if you love this idea, I want to encourage you you don't put your um, don't put your little forest together before you deal with the back and I knew that but I wasn't thinking <laughs> in in the right way so so for me what I needed to do and I decided not to take it apart I decided to just go for it and see what happens I wanted to do something on the back of the trees so for me I am using the silk screen and some of the red paint. I'm going to do red paint on one of the trees, one of the outside trees, and then I'm going to do green paint on the other. I My uh, silk screening here ends up being very imperfect. There's a little bit of extra paint that ends up getting through. This is one of those things that I am embracing uh, as I'm fine with it. And I think that if you are somebody that likes to play with paint and likes to play with ink and you just know that this is a little bit of the process. So I am protecting the back and I'm also going to protect that middle tree before I do the green paint. And then I will be letting those two dry before I tackle the next part. But you guys won't have to wait for that because it's the magic of video. So here I'm going to do the green on top of this one um, just to give me a little bit of texture and color on there and I think I should have taped it down that probably would have helped a little bit uh, in terms of getting a cleaner silk screen pull on there but I'm embracing it I am embracing it all right I missed uh filming this section so I did the I did one other embossed tree this is using the large uh, hat cross hatched patterned tree on there and I just did the gold embossing powder again and again this is on vellum love that texture love the variety that comes from having a different um, weight and and texture of paper too so I'm cutting that guy out and then he is going to get embossed on, or excuse me he's going to get adhered on the back so I have my colorful trees on the front Front, and then I have some red and green and gold trees on the back that can be used for whatever story I'm going to tell on the back of the page. And this is one of those times where things are just evolving as I'm working on it. So I wanted to see, you know, where else do I want to take this? I'm considering a few different things. I pulled out the two of the foam trees from the main kit and I'm kind of just considering, hmm, maybe I'll want to add those on there and maybe I'll want to add this green chipboard with the gold foil uh, on top of my my colorful trees and so that is what I ended up doing I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere that down I think I felt like it w did a good job of holding those vellum trees in place without me having to add a lot of extra um, you know other things on top just kind of flattened it down just a tad bit I also I can't remember if I said this or not but there I did uh, go ahead and staple the vellum trees onto those colorful trees so that was that was the part that you could wait to do later so that you could take care of the backs of uh, those other painted trees. Doing a little bit of rolling adhesive, adhesive for the vellum and uh, gold foil tree there. And then I'm gonna use some red line tape to adhere the trees in a minute. I pulled out, I with the sticker advent calendar this year, I pulled out the things that I really loved from the sticker advent calendar so that I could use them in various places. I obviously opened mine before um, just so that I could take out all the pieces that I really wanted. But you can see right there, I'm going to use red line tape to adhere the um, felt trees on top, just creating a little cluster of trees is essentially what I'm doing. So you might have different trees in your stash. You might want to do this all over a page, right? It might be really amazing or it would be really amazing to do just a page of a bunch of like multicolored trees. That would be super fun. These uh, glitter gold stickers are star stickers are also from the advent calendar this year. You might have these in your stash we've offered these um, we've, got, we've offered some of these in the past not as stickers but as um, 
their paper ones, but you can add adhesive on there. So I'm adhering two of those back to back to have a nice big star on top of my middle tree, one on the front, one on the back, and then I'm going to adhere. This is the Fall La Heart from the advent calendar is a pleather sticker, um, but I am also going to put a piece of foam adhesive underneath just to pop it up a little bit so that it doesn't have a big dent or divot in the middle uh, between those two felt trees. So the next piece in the process is getting ready to adhere this My Little Mini Forest to the top of my journal card. I'm going to use the thin red line tape that I have. I believe that's a quarter inch on the red line tape there. Just going with one strip across the top and then I will be adhering that directly onto my little cluster of trees trying to get it set in the right spot. My chipboard's a little bit off. These are all the things that I'm embracing. I'm just embracing it. I'm running with it. I actually love, love, love how this turned out. I think it was really fun. So then as I was looking at the back, I was like, okay, I could leave the back empty of the journal card for right now, um, you know, and so that I could have it for a specific story. But then I was thinking about this vellum piece from the specialty journal card set, the one that says Dear Santa, and I love it so much. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to use it now. We're going to do it. We're going to stick it on there. Uh, but before I do that, I am setting up my page attacher. I'm using one of the sticker page attachers that we offered this year. So you might have picked those up. You can also use the plastic page attachers if you've purchased those from our shop before they're currently out of stock. That is obviously another option. Um, let's see, so there we go. I'm gonna use red line tape to adhere that on there and I'm holding it in my album or next to my album so I can see and get it lined up right in the right in the right spot right in the space where I want it to be and I you can see too that I decided to fold it over first so it's stuck to itself and then I am going to adhere it to both sides now one of the things that I loved about the vellum and you can see that I am actually sticking the red line tape up underneath the bottoms of the felt trees so I just used I used a piece of red line tape to adhere those felt trees but I just did it in the middle so I was still able Able to stick something up underneath there and I really like how uh, how it looks when I stick the vellum up underneath there which you're gonna see I'm just gonna pull off the double the other side of the adhesive there and then I can stick it right up underneath there and get it positioned in the right place and then those two felt trees overhang just a little bit as I was doing this, I was like, oh, here's the spot where I can, <laughs> I can bring in another shaker. Uh, so that was what I decided to do. Again, festive and fun, festive, colorful, and fun. That is my, my hope for our family and myself this season. And I love having that reflected um, through the foundation pages that I am putting together. So I'm doing red line tape all around the outside edge. And before I pull up the adhesive there. I'm going to get it all around the edge and then I'm going to put a few of the uh, one of the sequin mixes from the Diary of Belle Rose inside there as well. Red line tape obviously is another option. I could have done foam adhesive but in this case I was going to be fine with just having the um, some of the sequins inside with the red line tape. So it's just a just a fun a fun little spot there and I didn't feel like it needed to be lifted up a lot off the back of the card. Love, love, love how, to, how this turned out. I think that that will be a fun jumping off point for some story. Who knows what story it's going to be for that back page. Um, front page obviously is going to be used to tell the story of our tree this year. As always, if you guys have any questions on this particular foundation page, you can let me know in the comments below. <music> 